told. Call to order a meeting for March 4th, Monday night, 2019. Somebody would like to make a motion to approve the agenda unless there's any ads or looking at Bill. He's not motioning. Nope. So, so I guess we're all set. I'll make the uh, motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Second that. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Consent agenda. Make the motion. Aye. Okay, the consent agenda items. Minutes of February 19th meeting. Liquor license for Blush Hill Country Club. Good Creations, LLC. <laughs> Lease must be their lease in the South End Sunoco and a country club of Vermont. Somebody I'll, make, I'll a make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 The public, is there anybody here from the public who wishes to speak? Moving too fast here. Uh, <laughs> Planning Commission interview. Katya D'Angelo. I thought I was going to mess it up, but I didn't. <laughs> Come on up. Right. Cool. Can I just come back here? Yep. Yeah, that, that mic should pick you up. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Hello. You after Mike Bard's position? Is that what you're Apparently. shooting for? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard there was an opening. So. Good for you. What interests you in that? Um. Well, I'm relatively new to town. I mm -hmm. delved into the zoning document, <laughs> massive document, um, a couple of times, a few times, for both business purposes and personal purposes, and a lot of it makes sense. A lot of it. Maybe not so much. Um, I'm curious, kind of, the history of how things came to be and with the changes happening in town already that I can see being a relatively new resident. Um, I'm kind of interested and have a vested interest in how the town plans for the future. Mm -hmm. So, Any uh, off the top of your head thoughts as to what you'd like to see versus what you're seeing? or? Well, I, um, I personally have an interest in kind of historic conservation stuff, so that, you know, in this town being rather historic, and um, I'd like to see that being nurtured and fostered in the future, but obviously there's considerations like housing issues and people wanting to come to town and affordability and businesses clamoring to get in, so um, there needs to be a balance between you know, opening the doors to people, both businesses and residential, and um, preserving the way the town looks and feels and is. It's been pretty much an ongoing discussion between the select board and the planning commission folks anyway. Mm -hmm. It's it's a real uh, hot topic for us, uh, particularly when it comes to the affordability mm -hmm. issue. And um, a lot of communities are facing the same thing, but it's certainly on our doorstep. Definitely, yeah. Just, I mean, we've been here three years, four years, and already, I mean, we can see the housing prices yeah. increasing and whatnot, and, um, you know, supply and demand, obviously, which goes into planning and zoning and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty interested in what the future holds. i am uh, always been a person to question economic development and the real theory behind it and the driving forces behind it mm -hmm. and you know where's the sweet spot in what is too much versus not enough and mm -hmm. uh, so it's a challenge to you know to try to set it up so that you and of course I get as Bill had spoken a long time ago about uh, you know, quality, I mentioned about a quality of life, you know, mm -hmm. and losing that mm -hmm. once you get beyond a certain size. And his uh, comment was some people that live in Burlington think it's the best life of all. And you wouldn't give me two plug nickels to move down there, you know. 
but uh, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder, right? True. I mean, I moved up from the suburbs of Boston, and we chose to live here for a reason, specifically in Waterbury. So, you know, it'd be nice to attract more people that want to live in a community like this. So, right. yeah. Well, I remember meeting you at the uh, public forum uh, that RW sponsored here a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad to see that you're you're continuing to take an interest, and, and uh, I certainly think you'll you'll be a welcome addition to the planning commission. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about the prospect, um, and of course it will be a learning opportunity for me too. I have not been in a planning commission before, so. <laughs> <laughs> I actually get to responsibly recuse myself because she sells ice cream on my <laughs> on my property and we do business together. So <laughs> yeah. I get to recuse myself because of that. Of that. Yeah, you came here without ice cream tonight. <laughs> it's her ice cream, not it's her ice cream. The freezer's empty, mine. much to Alyssa's chagrin, also. <laughs> okay. Um, we need a nomination? I, we do, unless she's got anything more she'd like to add. No, unless you have any other questions. To work. Uh, um, is there a particular term that this appointment is going to be for, Bill, or do you need that for the motion? I don't need it for the motion because I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. I'll make well, the motion. Don't we'll fill in the right term. <laughs> I'll make the motion that we appoint Katja D'Angelo to the planning commission position that's currently open. What if it's a lifetime position? <laughs> she asked for it. <laughs> that's true, although I'm going to retire when I'm 40, so. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a second to that motion, please? I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? OK. You're recused anyway. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm excited. I appreciate you volunteering to do so. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah, we need more. Yeah, yeah. Don't be, yeah. don't be afraid to drag some friends along here. <laughs> oh, right constantly. It's yeah. <laughs> Somebody else is proud. We know the feeling. <laughs> okay, select board business. Uh, town meeting discussion. That was something that I asked to be put on the. Uh, agenda. Um, last week uh, when uh, Jeff Kilgore was here, we kind of got into the weeds a little bit on having some of, more of an open discussion at town meeting. And I want to kind of come back to that and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, some possibilities of, of uh, how we can encourage some of the voters to step forward and uh, maybe get involved in some of their thoughts as to some of the issues that are on the agenda, uh, the special reports. Um, you know, I was a little bit set back, like as well as you were, Mark, about Jeff's uh, comments about we're not supposed to initiate conversation or questions, and we're supposed to allow them to do that, which is fine. It's just getting them to do that is the tough part. Uh, is it worth explaining that to them, Bill, at town meeting uh, before we begin? Well, I think I think Jeff probably will. Um, you know, I think there's a a little bit of a balancing act. Um, the determining, you know, from Jeff's perspective, what questions deserve answers and which questions deserve to just be kind of looked at and looked around the room. I, I think that's hard. I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, for most of us, if somebody asks a question, that you answer it. I, I think the differentiation is if somebody goes up to the microphone and simply makes a comment, you know, mm -hmm. I think that we spend too much money on X, Y, Z, or I think we should do more about this as opposed to that, you don't necessarily need to engage them in a conversation about that. They're making an observation. They're stating how they feel. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a question mark at the end of it. Why do we spend so mm -hmm. much money on this? I think that deserves an answer. You know, um, so 
into the binder, please. Well, if it would stay on, it would be easier to talk into it. Uh, to Mark's point the other day when we were talking about, uh, you know, a special meeting for, like, getting into the weeds on the roads and whatnot, um, I guess special meetings are tough, you know that. So how do you at least convey to the public at town meeting that, uh, you know, if they got any concerns, to come up and exp we can't have a conversation unless they initiate it uh, for the most part that's the way it sounds I feel like most town meetings someone brings up that the road isn't very passable <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm not trying to make that joke necessarily but I feel like there's usually an opportunity that someone brings up the condition of the roads and I feel like that opportunity probably will present itself I mean do you do, does the board think that that uh, town meeting is kind of generic. I mean, I, I'm more concerned about town meeting going away because people simply get bored with the same old crap every year and, you know, really don't, either don't want to take the initiative to get into the weeds on some of these issues or, or feel like they can't. I mean, where's, I guess, where's the fine line in, in uh, not getting into huge conversations about if, certain things, but yet at least giving us some idea as to how they feel about goods and bads, about what's going on in the town. I feel like the last couple of years, there have been major discussion points, and this year is probably going to be the fact that there's an increase in, and certain people wanting to know why. So I, I have a feeling we're going to see that as probably one of the main discussion points of, of an increase. Um, that the other years there was not a lot of discussion about increase, there were other topics at hand, but I would imagine that will be one of the topics discussed that will be a major discussion. And, and I, I remember at the other town meetings are open typically with Jeff saying, this is your meeting, this isn't the select board's meeting, this is your opportunity to talk about the issues that are important to you in the town. So I feel like as long as you're there, there for that opening, there's an understanding that that's why we're there. You know, I think they play out. I think sometimes maybe a boring meeting, town meeting is a good town meeting. And I think other times, you know, the other, I think it's important if we, and, and obviously we do, that roads and, and that infrastructure is, is a major focus going into this next year. Not that it hasn't been, but if we have the opportunity, because we don't have other things going on to really hammer down on it, I think, if we have an opportunity, I think we state that that's something we really want to take an even harder look at and have Bill spend some time on helping us navigate that. I think is a very important thing to to discuss and then follow through with. I mean, really, to, to your point, uh, last week's discussion there, I mean, the town's in pretty damn good shape other than our infrastructure, really. That's the big, last big hurdle. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, when, when we were talking about having a discussion about the infrastructure, um, I don't think we were talking about a special town meeting. We were talking about having some select board meetings where that was kind of the highlight agenda item that we might spend an hour at a couple of meetings to to go through it. And you know, I haven't really started getting into it yet because I'm still in the preparation stage for tomorrow, but you know, I, I looked at some of the things today and and we've got highway infrastructure in terms of bridges and culverts and roads and pavement and sidewalks. Then we've got vehicles for both the highway and fire department and um, uh, so you know those are the things that we'll have to kind of get a handle on, and I think that the challenge has always been um, that that's, that's not exciting stuff, really. It's just kind of stuff that needs to be done. And town meeting, you know, uh, Frank Bryan, who's retired now, 
uh, professor emeritus from UVM. Uh, he spent his career really studying town meeting. And, and, you know, if you read his books, you know, town meeting sweet spot is for towns that are maybe up to 2,500 people. And, and that's where they seem to be most effective. And just in the 30 years that I've been here, if you look at the complexity of the town report and what's in it, you know, 30 years ago, there was a general fund budget in there and that was it. You know, and that included the, the library budget. But, uh, you know, there was no CIP, there was no tax stabilization fund, there was no cemetery fund, there was no reserve funds. It was just, you know, and we had a highway department and a fire department uh, and an eight-week recreation department and planning, zoning, and administration. And that was really it in, in the library. Um, and over time, you know, we've created, we wanted to try to get a handle on the things that we have to spend money on down the road, the, the trucks, we needed to improve our facilities. So we ended up, you know, borrowing, I think it was $600,000 to create the first capital improvement fund. And then a lot of time goes into building that. And it's just a lot of number crunching, and you know, it's it's not really exciting to ask a lot of questions about that. Um, you know, the days that Walt Flato would get up and you know, ream on the planner or the zoning administrator about something. You know, th those kind of things are made town meeting entertaining, but it wasn't always fun for those particular people that were mm -hmm. being questioned. Um, I'm not saying town meeting is invaluable, but I think that we see, you know, there's a lot of numbers in that book, and it's hard to really know what's underneath those numbers. I think I know what's underneath all those numbers, but, you know, they might ask, well, gee whiz, you know, we budgeted $50,000 for sand and we spent seventy-four dollars or whatever the number is. What, what happened? Well, okay, you can read in my town in the manager's report that, you know, winter came a lot earlier, it stayed a lot, a, a lot later. So uh, it's, it's hard to, for the general public, I think, in terms of the meat of what the, you know, that budget article, there's just a lot of complexity in that article. It's, you know, you, you make a motion to approve a general a highway and a library budget, and then raise this amount of taxes all in one, and it's also including, you know, sending several hundred thousand dollars to capital funds, and then the next article is to spend whatever it is, I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, you know, nine hundred thousand dollars in capital spending, and so it, it, it's hard, and they, you know, so I think it's, it's challenging to have a real discussion with people because I think that the folks out there don't feel like they have a lot of information to ask the questions about. So for instance, like next year, we're gonna spend upwards of a million bucks here for two new fire trucks. Is that something that they have the opportunity this town meeting to talk about? Because by the time it rolls around next year, unless they show up here, which we all know they will, uh, there'll be literally no discussion discussion about uh, the expenditures on those two fire trucks. But yet now I'm hearing it, you know, bits and pieces out outside of here about why are we spending that much? So the, the, the select board has an opportunity to direct that a little bit. So this year, you know, we've got an article that just says, you know, you can read it there, Mark, you know, spend this much in capital spending. And it's all lumped together and you have to look at eight or ten pages in the report to figure out what it is. And, you know, some of it is pretty mundane stuff. Um, you know, $35,000 for a sidewalk and $50,000 for a culvert project somewhere. But then there, you know, there might be a pound truck in there for a significant amount of money. 
Um, the select board doesn't have to put it all into one article like we did this year. If you want discussion on whether we should spend a million dollars on two fire trucks, you can have a separate article that split it out. You, you can split out the, those articles as, as much as you want. You could even do it tomorrow if you wanted to. There's a parliamentary procedure that you could say on the article about uh, infrastructure, you could make a motion and ask the moderator to split the question. I'd like to talk about the highway vehicles independent from the others, and we would figure out how that is, and you could do it. Uh, it's hard for the public to know how to do that, but if you're concerned about future town meetings and that you really want to get the public's input, then just carve out the article and have a specific article on that truck. You could have us. You could do it for the for the Loomis Hill Road Project this well, year if you want. The the approach that we used with the police question is, in my mind, a, a model for how to approach something like that. If you want to do it outside of just the select board meetings and outside of the town meeting. And it's, it's providing the public information on an issue. And we did that not only through the, the local paper, we had postings on Front Porch Forum, we held a couple of public information sessions, gathered the information from uh, the folks in the community, and then, uh, although we ended up having a special town meeting on that one, there was a, a, a reason right. for that. Um, but I, I think with uh, the capital investment piece, uh, both both the infrastructure as well as as dealing with a sizable purchase like the uh, the trucks, um, because we talked last time about potentially bonding for those. Uh, and that would be the perfect opportunity to schedule one or two meetings uh, and invite the public to attend, have that open discussion, and then make the decision going yeah. forward. It, it, requires, it requires a little more action yeah, uh, on our part, but, but it is well worth it if you've got um, one or two really important issues that you want to get that public feedback from. Yeah, and I think with the police issue, you you kind of uh, lit a fire under getting some public input by actually appointing a committee. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily have to appoint a committee, you can just advertise it. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you know, you could ask people, would you like to serve on a committee to look at the infrastructure needs of the community? And, you know, there might be five people that say, yeah, that's something I might be willing to commit four or five hours to mm -hmm. over the course of two or three meetings, and then they could hold their own hearings if they wanted to. I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to do it. I think for the police, that's a little bit more of a natural for kind of a, a, a committee situation. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's a good example of how you can generate some interest. Mm -hmm. But I think well, that you know, you can talk about that maybe at town meeting, that we want to have some select board meetings where we're going to really ask you to come out and talk because, you know, we're not borrowing any money this year, but next year we've got some pretty big purchases. We're talking about, you know, potential bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like you to come out to select board meetings and, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll well, have, we're going to have them in, you know, whatever, May and June. Or, yeah. July and September, I don't know. Well, I think it's too to make sure that, you know, some, some of these numbers are huge and it could scare people if you upfront said, next year we're gonna have to spend a million dollars on fire trucks, but in reality, it's not gonna, I think when they hear that, they think it's a one year expense, their taxes are gonna skyrocket. And I think we discussed last week that, for example, in the firework situ or fire truck situation, that there are loan vehicles that could potentially match the basically depreciation schedule and amortization. So it's not it's not that daunting once it's explained, but if you just approach people and say, we're spending a million dollars on this, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of things that we're, we're gonna have to, to spend money to redo roads, and there's gonna be certain roads that are gonna be huge expenses, and we're not gonna wanna absorb that in single years. And I think once we explain that 
we're going to need to borrow on certain projects of certain size to spread that cost over hopefully close to the life of the road or the vehicle, people would start to understand that. And with the back end of saying that we're, you know, we live in this community too and we understand, we're trying to do the best we can to make sure that we make the appropriate spends and spread those costs for, you know, the, the appropriate amount of years that people would start to understand that and certain loans are going to come off and we're going to have to take new ones. But over time, hopefully we're, we're, we're making the right decisions and things like fire trucks, we have to do it at some point. It's when do we trigger it and are there opportunities to save a little money, for example, buying two at the same time might make sense. I mean, I think, again, the fire trucks and, and paved roads, like you said, they're not glamorous issues. And to try to get people on the hook to come up, you know, to any kind of a meetings uh, for those types of things. I mean, it wasn't like the police department where there was, I won't say an uproar, but there was a lot of people concerned about that and uh, up in arms about how it was going to get handled. And so that grabbed people's attention. Uh, where this other type of stuff and I just but I, I mean if you just try to have a conversation tomorrow about it I, I just don't think we have the right. information to share that's going to inform them enough to ask reasonable questions I, I think that you're going to have to do it at one of these meetings in preparation for the next town meeting and I hope that people show up yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I've been at some of the town meetings where I feel like some people might walk out feeling scared about the future of Waterbury, and I think it's important to explain that they shouldn't be, and they should be happy to live here. I don't know. I just don't want to go into these meetings and scare people with numbers that might not necessarily be accurate. I think it's important to right. to lay out the accurate information for the best that we have knowledge of, or say we're going to continue to to look at it and research it and make decisions in the future and if you want to be involved please attend the meetings but not use numbers that we can't necessarily support right and, and that's a really good point and i'm not i'm not you know we can't make any promises about the future we don't know what's going to happen but my gut right now just looking at the numbers that we have and where we are um you know i'm thinking that the six cent tax increase that we might get some questions about tomorrow is we're paying for past decisions. We made a decision a year ago to move to this police department. And now we've got, we've also got the WASI thing on top of that. And uh, when you look at that, um, we were in a position where we had reserve funds last year that buffered the first six months of our expenses, it really didn't cost us anything. I think going forward, my, I'm not saying that we're gonna have another year, a year from now where the tax rate is level funded at you know zero like we had for three years in a row. But my gut tells me it's probably not gonna go up six cents again next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we we kind of had the one lip to catch up to this police department issue and then going forward it will, I think, and a return to the historic trend of not, you know, smaller increases. Well, if you pull that police department budget out, that's five cents of right. the six cent increase. So basically, it's a one cent increase. Yeah, a one cent increase. Actually, it's three closer years. to three cents, right? If you, include, if you include the full year, which is 185,000, you throw the ambulance in there, that's another 40, so now you're up to 210. Yes. The year of the police is 365. Yeah, but the, the half of it, the, the I'm sorry. extra half for the full year. Yeah. But Bill is saying that, you know, we just happen to be able to absorb that in the previous year. But basically, if you pull the police department out, we would have seen a one yeah. cent increase. Yeah. Right. So the police department represents five cents of the six cent increase. Sure, you could try to pull everything else out and say, well, half it was last year the change in but i really think you have to look at it as if you pulled the police department out we'd be looking at a one percent increase we have the police department we're able to absorb it but now it's just what we voted in and it's five cents of the six cents so i guess from what i'm understanding you're basically suggesting that perhaps there's an opportunity tomorrow that 
either through Article 4 or through Article 8 that you could say to the voters, you know, coming this year, there will be some conversation about how we deal with some of our infrastructure, how we deal with purchases of some of our bigger vehicle uh, issues, and we may hold, <coughs> we may be interested in holding some meetings to get public input on those, and we would appreciate that yeah, you it, be interested in showing up. Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather than say we're, we're going to hold meetings, you can just say we're going to include on select board agendas these issues, and we'd really like to... Okay. No, that's what I'm saying. We're not, yeah, we weren't necessarily going to hold, but we're going to have discussions about these issues, and it yeah. wouldn't hurt our feelings if uh, if more of the public showed up and helped us out with them, give us some ideas. Okay. Enough of that. Um. <laughs> and, and also going forward, I think that so many people do look at Front Porch Forum and and, you know, things such as that that we might want to consider that going forward is getting the word out and some of those things because um you know not everybody reads the paper sure there's plenty of times where i hear people say oh, i wish i would have had a voice in that it's like well we held meetings but i agree that not everyone really understands the process and the okay. more we can market the process maybe the more people can people look at these things you know a thousand times a day yeah so not me <laughs> I'm going to be old school to the day I die, <laughs> one way or another. Okay, uh, we all set with this one. We can move on to the next item, traffic ordinance. Yeah, I asked uh, uh, for this to be put on just as a follow-up to our discussion at the last meeting. Um, Chris, you had raised a question about whether or not uh, the state highway stretch um, on 100 and you didn't ask about route 2 but route 2 would be included in that those are not incorporated as local speed zones under our current ordinance they can be uh, it's just a matter of inserting the language and re-upping the ordinance so if if the board is interested in doing that that would be a, a step to take forward and it's what a 60-day cycle once you have the adoption um, uh, Carla posted up the uh, current ordinance on the website now, so you can take a look at it if you want. But there was, I found a couple of editing things in there. Some of the reference stuff just had placeholders for the section numbers, so it's probably a good thing to take a look at. But um, my recommendation would be that if you wanted to ensure that all the speed zones within the town uh, would fall under the local ordinance that we adopt, uh, the state posted limits on the state highways, both on Route 100 and uh, Route 2. Does that does that change any of the uh, the uh, speeding ticket type? Changes the uh, Mark knows this better than I do, and if I state it incorrectly, correct me. But. Um, as I said at the at the last meeting, uh, if some if one of the police officers writes a ticket for speeding on Guptill Road, they're going to cite the town's ordinance because it's the town's highway, at Title 24. If they cite somebody for speeding on Route 100, I think they use Title 23. Well, they're they're both under Title 23, but there's uh, different codings for the local ordinances okay. versus the state speed zones. But the, for instance, of Guptill Road, if they wrote it as a state violation, they would have to write it as a 50 mile an hour zone because it, that is what they would have the authority to do. But the, uh, our updating of the ordinances that we did a year ago uh, provided them with the opportunity to write the local uh, speed limit uh, under uh, local ordinances. Um, so the only thing that's missing right now is just that uh, the two stretches of state mm -hmm. highway. We can't change the speed limit as posted on the state highway, right. but we can adopt it right. under our local ordinances and then be able to write under that local ordinance. And then ordinance we would have highway. to ask them to write it under the proper code in order for the revenue to come to us as opposed to the state. Yeah. 
And do you think that's appropriate for us to do that? Sure. Yeah. The, the, the village had done it. Um, so, you know, the village had a speed ordinance and the town did. And on the section of Route 100 within the village, the village had included that. I thought we had done it. Uh, I'm sure you're right, but I thought that I had tried to include that, but maybe I missed it. We had talked about it. When I looked at it, I didn't see it, which is what stood out to me. It articulated the, the rest of the zones pretty well, but um, it, it's done in a number of communities that uh, have local enforcement opportunities there. And, and um, we would have to fine. cite from this point to this point, it's 35 miles an hour from this point to this point, it's 40. From this point to that point, it's 50. Yeah, in concurrence with the state zone. That's not going to get under the skin that up, that somebody up at VSB. No, no. no. When we uh, first talked with them about this, we, we talked about the prospect of, of them uh, enforcing uh, speed zones as uh, local ordinance violations, and they were, they were fine with that. Uh, which was the reason we, we did the update when we adopted uh, what the village had in place and we just took that over as a, as a standing town ordinance. So it's just, it's more of a housekeeping thing than anything. So I guess this is maybe a, probably the best time to bring this up, seeing as how we're talking about state police and such. Um, the other day down at the, f the fire station when the state police showed up to have the community uh, interaction there, um, through the discussion, I uh, threw out this idea of whether or not they might have, could they, uh, and would they have the time to possibly show up at town meeting uh, for a short introduction at some point, and Ann said, suggested, you know, prior to the representatives. Uh, so I wanted to run that by you and, and yes, see how you felt about it, whether or not the, we should. to the board. I mean, um, that would be the time to do it. There's it, none of that's on the warning, but there's always a break time where, you know, Jeff, um, let's, we invite um, John Walter to speak about solid waste and then the, the state reps speak. Um, and then the Keith Wallace Award happens. Right. So if you can work it out with Jeff, if the if the troopers are there or if one of the troopers are there, I mean, it's, if the board wants them to do that. Yeah. And so how do we make this all happen by tomorrow as far as, you know, informing the troopers of the correct time to be there and uh, uh, making sure, Everett brought up a point about making sure that they got a fairly decent place to park in case they got a bug out for some reason. Well, I don't I don't know what the time is gonna be. I, I can't tell you right now. It's just so how could somewhere. we Mark get a what, hold get a hold of the ten o'clock. The police officer yeah. Keith there yeah. seemed he you was know, fine. Oh yeah, he yeah. was quite fine with it. Yeah. yeah. And he'll he'll be working that shift and if you made him uh, aware of that. Did you need to get back to confirm with him? Well, that's what I was. Yeah, I think I told him we would, you know, run it by Bill and see what his thoughts were and and uh, go from there. So. Well, I think the easiest thing to do would be when you guys get there tomorrow, talk with Jeff to mm -hmm. see what time it is, and then if you can just get a message to the dispatcher and tell them well, yeah. you're on at 10 o'clock if you're interested. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. I think that's the simplest way to do it. Yeah, the, I don't have, I, I'm not the one running the meeting, I don't. Yeah, now the, the more appropriate route with that would have been to uh, have us invite Lieutenant White um, and, and have him just speak on behalf of that. But um, certainly there's, there's no problem with the introduction kind of thing. And if, uh, if they're comfortable with that and they're available to do that, it makes good sense. They're, they're trying to be known throughout the community anyway, so they're doing so a lot of meet and greet. From, I just want to be clear, are you suggesting that he comes and he's simply introduced and that's it? Or is he going to field questions? And if, I mean, I don't know what's appropriate protocol from the state. Well, I, I had suggested that he do a, maybe a, a condensed version of the discussion the other night about, you know, community involvement, looking for 
you know, any information and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, but that was the night shift trooper. And no, Keith was there as well. He, He's not talking, for this no, 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 no. I'm talking, talking about, about the, fire, oh, yeah. the fire department. But at yeah. that meeting, uh, you know, it's a matter of how comfortable he feels with what he's got going on. I mean, he's been here a couple of months, so he, he may, may or may not have a, a good handle on things. But if in your discussion there, he was comfortable with it and he wants to share that, I think that's good. Because one of the things about this first shot out the door with it, it lacked a little bit of uh, prior warning for folks. So I think the opportunity to have the discussion there about exactly. what, what they're trying to do and what they would like to do and the input they want from the community, I think that makes fine, fine sense. Everett, you want to come up? <coughs> that that mic not be, might not be on. Be sure to turn it on. There's a little light that goes on. I know, but the little light didn't come on in. What I had said the other evening, or the other afternoon, when the state police were at the fire station, my suggestion was if, in fact, he didn't have a call going and wanted to come in and stand somewhere a little ways away from the checklist, not holding up the checklist in any way, but if he was there, uh, the only thing that would be as far as him speaking was no different than when the former chief came, because he didn't live in Waterbury, nobody objected he could speak. But my thought was if Keith, the new person on day shift, wanted to come in and prove by your people and Jeff, uh, then he could just be a little ways away from where the checklist in is and casually say hello to people and if they had a question or were happy about what was going on, at least it could be discussed briefly at that point and that would not be part of the meeting after it was ongoing. But during the meeting, if he's going to speak, I believe he has to have, uh, the question has to be asked by the moderator, uh, anybody object to this individual who lives out of town? I believe I'm correct on that. So all I was trying to do was to get them so that we could encourage more people to come. We had a not a very good uh, amount of people there. Williamstown, Williamstown had one a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. They had about 60 taxpayers there. So if Williamstown can do that, there's no reason that Waterbury can't. It got advertised, perhaps not as much as it should have. And the Waterbury record didn't get it in the paper until the day of the uh, for the actual meeting in terms of an article. So with that said, uh, as I talked to you this morning, Chris, uh, hopefully it works out so that uh, maybe you can come. And I was the one who suggested that maybe we ought to check with him, see if he'd rather park out front or up back, and maybe put out a couple cones and make him aware that we had appropriated uh, a certain spot for him. So if he had to leave for an emergency, he could still do that. Yeah. With that said, any questions, disagreements? Not, I'm happy. Did I get to work again, Mark, or not? Yeah, that's working. So it was, it was an operator again, huh? <laughs> I'll shut it off. Thank you. So uh, maybe I'll get together with you tomorrow, first thing, and yeah. you, have, did, did have, you, leave you have the connections, Yeah, I think, as far as, did I leave yeah. what? No, did, uh, did you leave it with them that uh, at we least one of them was, was going to show up at the meeting? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Manager's items, I guess. Um, the first item is just to talk about tax anticipation borrowing. Um, we had to do a bit of it last year. We're probably going to have to do more of it this year. Um, and I don't have a, a note or anything for you to sign right now. Uh, we may have to, um, at a formal uh, revolving line of credit from the bank. That's how we typically do tax anticipation borrowing now. Uh, used to be that we would borrow 
a million dollars, you know, the first week of the year, use that to operate, invest it, and you know, the money that you made on the interest on the investment reduced the amount of, um, you know, it, it, the net cost of borrowing was offset. It was made lower because you were earning some money on that investment. But interest rates are still so low on money that you can put aside that it doesn't really make sense to do that. So we've typically just drawn down on a line of credit. Um, I would ask that the select board for tonight authorize me to both borrow and lend uh, from and to the Edward Pryor Utility District for the purposes of tax anticipation borrowing. Um, if we have to borrow at all, and if one or the other of the municipalities has the cash available, nice to keep the interest here as opposed to paying it to the bank. Um, we will have to borrow uh, next week. Um, we're going to have to make the last tax installment payment to the school for the taxes that were collected in the, in November. We have to pay them within 120 days of the tax collection date, and that's Saturday, so we'll pay them early next week. Um, it's $400,000 that we still owe them, and we've got about $376,000 in the bank today, so I know we're going to need to borrow. Um, but for now, if you would just make the motion to authorize borrowing to and from the Edward for our Utility District. So moved. I'll second that. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 We touched on what I wanted to do, so see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Appreciate you showing up, Everett. Thanks, Annie. Need a motion to go into the exec? Yes. Do you have that motion? Or I do not. No? All right. Well, you're making the same motion you made that I made day. before. Yeah. There's there are actually two motions. Right. Yes. And I'll make them both. Okay. Is there a second to those? Is there a second to those motions? I'll second both of them. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Aye.